Hello YouTube friends, welcome to the Red Parrot channel. I am your host Mary Ellen. This episode is a textile Thursday where I pull out some textile of interest to me and do some show and tell and maybe some um, deep dive into the piece of textile and hopefully we learn something and understand our world a little better. So, I have a really special textile. And what I want to do is understand it and document it so that I can use some of the information that is held in here and then incorporate it into my work. Now, what I have here is a family. Oh, I gotta swoosh some stuff up here so I can get some more space. Clearly didn't make enough space when I started the first time. That's per use. What I have is a crazy quilt. It is a very special crazy quilt. So here is the quilt. And ta-da. And I have it on a piece of... Um, what do I want to call it? Uh, just sheeting so that I can move it around much easier than otherwise. And what I might do is see if I can't. So pardon the, the weird camera. There's going to be a weird camera. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But this is so that we can go a little bit closer and do a proper scan of the textile. Now I'm just sort of going to scan across and then down and then across and then down so we'll get to the blue here i have no idea who in my family made this but because i have a family that understands textiles bless their wee heart they have put a date down. So if nothing else, by process of elimination, I can figure out who was alive in 1894 and or who was capable of doing stitching in 19, 1894. Now this is almost at the end. And once I get this sort of scan done, then I'll put you back up in the, um, I was gonna say the overhead projector, but you know what I mean? The, um, the uh, camera holder, and then we can do some things. And we can talk about it in more detail. So that's a scan of the piece, the textile. Oh, I'm sorry, jiggly pokey, jiggly pokey. I'm very sorry, very sorry. Uh, what are we doing here? Here we are. Is that good enough? Move that over that way. Pull back over this way. Good enough. Okay. There. Thank you for your patience while we did that little tour. So, I'm going to stand up for a bit just so that I can see through the camera as well as um, talk about this uh, piece of textile. So what I wanna record are the kinds of stitches that were used in this crazy quilt. So that I can then use it when I do things like journal covers and um, you know potentially my own crazy quilt, I will have a short list of stitches that I can draw upon as opposed to going, oh my God, I have no idea. Let's just do a blanket stitch because it's the only thing that I can think of. So one of the things that I think a lot of needleworkers, embroiderers, and certainly um, costumers will do once they sort of see the surface is they will turn it over and have a look at the backside. So this is the back side, back side number one, and then we'll turn this back over this way. 
and then we'll do it this side. This is back side number two. So this is the, um, the, the back side of the stitching and the looking on the back is informative to look for things like knots, for things like how neat a stitcher they were, um, to look at any kind of connections, maybe some uh, stay stitching, and also to look at what the fabric is. And so this looks like it is a um, just a base base muslin, a basic cotton. I am not sure if this is faded with age. I suspect it is because let's see, 1890, where's 1893? 1894, 1894, 2023. I need a calculator because I can't do this kind of math in my head. So, Oh, turn it on. So, 2023 minus 1894. Ah, okay, so it's uh, 30 years old. I should also have a Google search for what was going on in the world in 1894, just for grins. So I'm going to sit down now, I think, for a bit and tell you about some of the fibers that are here. So there is a lot of velvet. So these bits here are all velvet. There is a textured piece that is right here. So this is flat and this is sort of raised. There is some um, probably silk that is flat. Um, there's another piece of beautiful, probably uh, silk here. Um, this is also probably silk. I don't know if you can see in the light, the texture. I should stand up again. See if you can see it. Yes, you can. Um, this is a pattern piece. Um, and some other bits and pieces. So now as I look at it a little bit closer, um, oh, here's another really lovely pattern piece of um, velvet. So looking at it closer, there are pieces that are the same. So this is the same, that's the same, that's the same. Um, that gray, that gray is the same. Uh, what else is the same? I think there is some of these burgundies are similar. There's only one of those blue. This white makes me bananas because white has the weird effect of drawing your eye. Um, I am sure that this was not a concern for the person doing this, but I think that somehow, I shouldn't say improves it, but improves it. Um, but it is a gorgeous piece of textile. It is 130 years old. So let us not complain too hard about what is um, happening here. So what I want to do is cover part of this. Do that. And then, do I have another piece of fabric? Do I have another piece of fabric? What a question, what a question. So I'm gonna do that. So this fabric is to do two things. It's to protect it, the actual textile, and also to give me a small corner that we can look at in more detail. And then hopefully record some of the stitches that are in this quadrant. I have two embroidery books. I have Embroidery and Crazy Quilt Stitch Tool, which um, used to be a flip up this way, but I couldn't stand it. I needed a book. So this is blah, blah, blah. It is Judith Baker Montano. Um, mm, copyright 2008. This I think is highly recommended by Rachel at Roxy Creations. 
and Creative Stitching by Sue Spargo. Sue Spargo is a quilter. There, put that up there. She is a quilter. She is also, um, there is a, a company called Sue Spargo and she sells the most amazing embroidery flosses, uh, um, wool fabrics and so on and so forth. And so she is absolutely a textile artist. And this book comes as a recommendation from uh, Ariane Zercher, who is an improvisational stitcher. Um, and so this is Creative Stitching, second edition, published by Sue Spargo, copyright 2017. So we've got some stitch references. That's a long way of saying we've got stitch references. So this whole piece of textile is 21 inches wide by 20 inches tall. That's one thing. Um, it is two layers. Um, move this over a bit. So it is two layers, an under layer of cotton and then a quilted layer of uh, mixed fabric, uh, silk, what do I call this, velvet? I think those are probably the only two. So let us have I just want to have an understanding of, okay, that's about seven and a half. I should pull that down another, another size or so. Don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. I just want to have a look at a square. So that's about a seven. Oh, no, no. I'm going to do it right. going to do it pink. Jeez, just leave it. Okay, so now what do we do? Uh, well, we've got to look at it a little bit closer. So one of the stitches that I see a lot is this one. So it's there. It's all around there. It's, mm, nope, it's there. And the way that stitch goes is like a, goes like that, goes in, comes up, goes in, comes up. That's called something. Um, it's like a hem stitch almost. I wonder if there's a... Okay, please make the, the index be at the front. Or the back. Oh, okay. So, here. It is a herringbone. Helen, Herringbone Stitch 101. Okay. This is a modified herringbone stitch. And what they're doing here is they are doing the herringbone stitch and they are then coming back and doing another stitch like that. And that's creating this piece here, which is kind of cool. Um, this is a cross stitch.
And then the modified is Okay, that is a blanket stitch, B for blanket, hmm, They call it a buttonhole stitch. Taxonomy is important. I wonder if this, this doesn't even have it. Well, what do I know it as? I know it as, um, let's put both. What else do we have? This happens in a couple of spots and it is um, like a fan almost. This index is kind of help, helpful because it at least has got the pictures. Kind of a straight stitch. And they are sort of, I'm part of my fat head. So this one in particular has the stitches that go evenly. So it is sort of a parallel to the side here. Um, That way. Okay. Um, probably going to get my fat head in this again. So that's chain stitch. In a zigzag form. That is something. So that's these stitches here. So they are, uh, what are they? Pardon me again. They are okay. That's a stitch. Um, but um, okay. So. Not Algerian eye stitch. It's some kind. Of cross. And I don't think it is, is it included in here. Hmm. So palestrina knot, squared palestrina knot. 
chief stitch. That makes way more sense. And it makes way more sense to me, weirdly, because this was made on a farm in the Ottawa Valley in Ontario, Canada. For that, I am absolutely certain. And so a sheaf stitch would be, to me, the word sheaf comes from a farm as opposed to palestrina, which would have been a very, to me, a European um, uh, style stitch. Um, so what else do we have here? Pardon my fat head again. So that's chain. Mm -mm. Hi, sweet pie. How are you? That's chain. Okay, so there's some weird things happening here. I would say... So there is a stem stitch that's happening on this side, but it's like they wanted to do a... Um, uh, a V shape, but then blanket stitch the V shape, and then they did the same thing here. So I would call this um, modified blanket into um, V. Yeah. I know you're swearing at me. I can hear you. I know, baby girl. Oh, I know. I know. It's very sad. Gosh, this is weird. So, they wanted, it's like, into, it's just like staggered V. I know. That's bananas. Um, and I think that is all of the stitches that are here. I stick my head down again. So all of these patches are um, uh, patches are um, edge folded and Hand sewn only. No machine. Quilting. Okay. So that's eight stitches we've got. You wanna, are we feeling sparky? Do we wanna do another eight? Let's try. So pen down. I'm just going to fold that over. Bring that up a bit. And then reveal some more. Um, that's not a square yet. That's better. Seven. Okay. We'll do one more patch and then we'll, we'll call it. Because I think at some point this is going to start repeating fairly quickly. So, blanket stitch, pardon my fat head, that is a stem stitch. Um, 
that's that weird. Is it? It's a stem stitch with cross stitches over it. Um, cross stitch. This is what I call it. Sheaf stitch. Um, this might be something. One, two, three. It looks like um, a duck foot. I don't think there is a stitch called duck foot. There kind of should be. Um, it's not a fly stitch because it's one, two, three. Kind of, um, fern leaf. What's, um, 84. Oops. Yes, it's a, let's call it, um, three stitch, a three stitch fern, and I'm just going to call it the duck foot so that I remember it. Um, so this is more of the herringbone. This is more of this sort of weird, um, just creating, um, uh, like marks almost. Uh, that's just a V. And I'm going to call it a two-stitch fern, for lack of a better way of saying it. Okay. And so we are starting to get repetition, which is exactly what I expected to get. And we can probably do the rest of this row. Uh, I'm going to move this over. Here we are. Oh my goodness, did that did that just insult your sensibilities? Here we are. Okay, that's attached. I am not gonna pull it off. Hilariously, hashtag. That just makes me laugh. Um, so this is the modified herringbone that is the sheaf stitch. This is a something. That's a wheel. I think that's a heart. I have no idea what these are. Maybe that's, um, corn? Corn and a flower. That's what that is. Oh, that's adorable. That's just really sweet. Aw. Aw. Uh, sort of a fern stitch. There's that same, I'm going at it again. And the duck foot. And here's more herringbone. At some point when we do this, I'm going to have to look at the number of colors of threads that there are, but we need to do one thing at a time. And this one thing is basically figuring out the stitches. So for the next three Thursdays, if I can stay out of the thrift stores, and I think I will, we will continue documenting the stitches that are in this quilt. In the meantime, I need to figure out what was happening in 1894 and 
I think my Aunt Mary would have kept track of people. And so I probably would have a record. Or I'll just look and see. I don't think that there's anybody alive still that would know who made this. So, uh, sad, but also interesting. It gives us a, a chance to, to look at some things. But even if I only had like the top four, this gives me a tremendous stitch um, library to use for a crazy quilt. And again, using this potentially as a um, stitches for a journal cover and, and looking at it as an opportunity to see um, what a journal cover might look like if you wanted to have this kind of um, look and feel. And rest assured, I am not going to be cutting up this quilt for the purposes of um, making a journal cover. Uh, that would kill me. Absolutely kill me. Anyways, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this little tour of a uh, an 1894 crazy quilt. Talk to you soon. Bye now.